Hello, everybody. Welcome to this uh, episode of China Talk, episode forty-seven. Yes. yes. There we go. I definitely. It's wasn't almost like you've done this before or something. Oh man, I feel like I'm coming from the past, future. Yeah. Hmm. Ah. Oh, no. Okay. So, anyways. It's <laughs> like your echo. Ah.、Uh, oh! Much like this piece of cake, this episode is quite the treat. Ah.、Uh, <laughs> We have. Can we have another redo? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's keep going. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so we had quite a few games. We've had horrible games. We've had amazing games.、Um, so let's just get right to it. First team that's been quite interesting throughout the entire split. Snake, Kelsey. What's the lowdown of Snake? Snake's been playing a lot of folk compositions,、uh, <laughs> first of all, which is、mm. interesting, and they are not good at them at all. They attempt to play them the same way they do every single composition, which is the five v five. So you have this concept of Snake. It's like that's great. They're experimenting. This is really awesome. And then they pick this folk composition. One of them was like really, really funny and cheesy in theory because they had the Jace for the、mm. gate. And they had the、uh, Sivir ultimate, so you combine those and you go really fast. But on top of that, they had Scion Jungle, so he can pop his ult, and it's just like a cannonball, just like bam <laughs> in your face. It's like a really ambitious poke. Did not exactly <laughs>、uh, <laughs> work as planned.、Yeah. Um, they lost 2-0 to Beachy Gaming with Dandy Top, so that was really awesome to watch.、Um, <laughs> Yeah, and then in every game, the post-game graphs, you did the most damage. So apparently, he can do damage, but they can't convert their damage into wins because they think that they're playing a five comp. In Snake's defense, though, I think like if they're going to pull out shit that they're uncomfortable with, like poke compositions, and get practice, and I think against Vici was like the best time to do it, just because like you know Vici is obviously rebuilding and everything's all thrown off and stuff, so. Yeah, Vici as a whole is like a much weaker team now, I guess overall, and that's probably, well, at least that's probably their mentality going into it. Like, you know, let's, we might as well, like, learn other forms of play against teams that are weaker.、Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like they did it. I mean, I don't know. I didn't watch all the Snake games this weekend, but if I were if I were like from Snake and I was like, okay, I don't want to just be tunnel visioned into this like five v five, like just. Uh, I can't find a good word for it, but yeah, if they don't want to just tunnel into five v five team fights all the time. Then they're going to practice other stuff so that they're not as predictable. Then that would be a good time to do it. I feel like the new theme for Snake seems to be freedom. Like a <laughs> lot, like, like last split, there was a lot about like the coach not letting、uh, what's it called、uh, Crystal play Draven near the end, and then we, it was just like for the entirety of the split, it was just this one set comp. They were going in with this composition. They were living or dying with it, and then they went in the playoffs, and then they died with it. But <laughs> like now, they're going into this next split, and it's literally for the good point. You see, like, hey, now Flounder is playing a style like every. It, it's working out. You see, like he's not so whipped anymore. Like everything else <laughs> looking good, but then you look, you see the bad part of it. You see, like the Nidalee games, Nidalee jungles. Yeah. And you're like I don't know about that one, Beast. Please go back to Nunu. <laughs> yeah. Pretty forgiving of Beast's Nidalee last week, but after this week, I'm like, you know, maybe, maybe you just don't want to play that champion. It's just there's a lot of freedom. I like freedom, but sometimes you gotta you gotta keep set on that path, and I feel like that path is kind of blurred with that team right now. <laughs> maybe too much American Pie in that team. <laughs> All right. Well, What then you, you get builds like Wanderer's Echo. Mm. So what's what's the、Edith、step forward? Enchantment, <laughs> Triforce, Frozen Heart. Yeah, that that's the true winner of the week. I feel is <laughs> if I thought about doing like a a most memorable echoes of the week、uh, in looking at Europe and North America and China, and then number one would be Flandra's、uh, top lane echo with Smite. Magus Enchantment and Trinity Force because it was fucking awful. <laughs> oh god. And well, then, was... uh, to be fair, that wasn't even like think about that build. That wasn't even the worst thing about that game that for、mm. him. So he did the they did the lane swap and they pushed down the tower and then they reverted the lane swap so he was top against、uh, 
Shogu's Nar, so he's already against V's Nar, which is his best champion. And they're, like, I guess technically Aurelius is best champion, but he doesn't play it as much as Nar, and his stat line is, his record isn't as good as his Nar record, so... Uh, they're playing against it, and then he comes and gets ganked by Swift. And he's killed, and he loses the minions on the tower, but he does get the kill back, so everyone's like, oh, this is fine. But then what really happens is the minion wave resets and starts pushing back. So by the time he gets back to lane, since he doesn't use his teleport, the minion wave is all the way on the other side of the map. So what does he do? He goes there! He decides it's an excellent idea to walk all the way back down there, and he's just like chilling there, farming on the other side of the map, and then he gets 1v1 killed by V. So, um, really awesome. Flandra had nowhere to go from there, and uh, yep. that game sucked. But I guess in terms of where Snake goes, I I think that it's okay for them to experiment, but I think something like Poke for a team that's so used to 5v5ing might be a little bit extreme. Like, maybe they could work on split pushing and having, like, skirmishing, like, added to it or something like that, and not so much. I mean, they have been working a little bit on, on split pushing, but I don't know. I, I mean, I don't really want to gauge that. Like, I don't want to look at it as a, like, a, well, where should they go from here to Excel thing, just because, like, I think throwing a few uncomfortable compositions into a regular season that has so many games isn't really that big of a deal in the long run, especially against their opponents. Like, now, if they were trying this stuff, like, trying to legitimately make this, like, a thing against EDG or IG or something, I guess that'd be a different story, but I think they're doing, I think they're doing just fine, honestly. I think Snake is a really good team right now, to yeah. be honest. I mean, I'm, well, they're I'm... solidly tied for fourth, so they have, like, a little bit of room to kind of experiment mid-season. And technically for playoffs, I mean, they have tons of room, because you only need to be top eight, so... They're yeah. tied for fourth, but they also have played more games than the other teams, for the most part, so... Um, but the... I think there's one other team. I think it's UP that's played as many games as them. Mm -hmm. But they... The other issue, and I agree with that, but the problem is, is just, like, they have to decide when losing they're losing too many games versus enough games, like... When do they have to start calculating seeding? I think that Snake is trying to pull an LGD kind of where they're trying to use their like their off season really well. They're trying out these poke compositions and poke isn't something that's completely new to them because they used to run an Italy Zareth composition. I think they ran it for three games last split. Mm -hmm. um, no, awesome. Added the entire season. So it's not like it's something that's completely random, but the the meta has changed significantly from then. Italy isn't as good. And Beast Nidalee has been really underwhelming for me, overall. Mm -hmm. um, it's just one of those things where you have to start to say, okay, is this going to be an LGD Callista situation where they keep practicing it and keep practicing it until they do it and they execute it really well in playoffs? Or is it going to just be a waste of time? Yeah. I honestly wouldn't mind that from Snake, though, because I feel like the largest piece of criticism levied at them last season was like, Oh, when is Snake gonna fall off? Because like the joke was kind of, oh, they're the only team that's trying, right? In the first part, and then like, oh, they always do the same thing, but they're really successful at doing like that one thing, but they never ever tried to branch out. So I think, mm -hmm. I don't know, like I'm, I'm still really happy to see this from them, um, just because I feel like it. They address a lot of their issues in the off season, um, like we've touched upon in previous episodes, and then I just think that it shows that they're still thinking and they still want to learn and want to develop and and stretch themselves to prepare for playoffs. So they've like, if anything, they've adapted from being an LSPL team to an LPL team, basically. Like they're doing the same thing that a lot of LPL teams, like specifically LGD, like sometimes IG. Um, IG is kind of different though, but like LGD is kind of the, the primary example, right, of, of the team that kind of tries stuff out and then um, tries to get like the best seating going into the playoffs. Like I feel, I don't know, I like, I really like seeing this from Snake actually because it's just so different from what they were last season and it seems like mm -hmm. they've really adapted to the league well. Yeah. Yep. A, g a good example of a team going in that route and right now not finding that balance seems to be Vici. But, <laughs> that well, seems... yeah, but it's like not even really Vici anymore. I mean, they have most mm -hmm. of the same players, but like everything, 
became completely different as soon as they swapped out of the jungle, so. Yeah. Um, I don't even think they're experimenting. I think this is them trying, which is yeah. really kind of oh, sad. Okay. Because... Well, I think experimenting was the wrong word, sorry. <laughs> well, well, yeah, okay. It's kind of like an experiment because, but it's an experiment that they're not willing to back out of, I guess. <laughs> it's like, it's kind of an experiment that they seemingly were, like, you know, forced into, but... Rather yeah. than like, we don't even like know Snake how is forced willingly doing this. We don't it's know. Like, yeah, uh, we don't know like what is going watch on. Watch them want to go just... back to the to what they used to be, and it's like, oh god, we don't have carry anymore. World six. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he plays top. Greg as top because right now it's like the only champion that he's played that I'm really convinced on. And the first pick it all the time, it's like, yeah, Greg is top. I just literally watched, gambit yeah. gaming yeah. with the jungler camping top again and yeah. I, yeah i mean i don't know it's so hard to like look, look like a decent jungler when your old jungler was dandy but i actually think that world six isn't doing like too bad like i feel like he had pretty good gragas alties this weekend mm -hmm. I saw. My, yeah, my thing yeah my thing was just so like... team fighting is good i guess but inconsistent but he can do well i guess i don't know I he's gonna good at throwing his r button in the middle of a pack of champions <laughs> I'd want to see him on a few more champions. I was just gonna make like a really bad joke as an aside. It was just like, uh, LGD Gaming, hey, look! VG Gaming just kind of like threw something in the air and they managed to pick up this guy. <laughs> Interesting <laughs> how that works. It's interesting. Damn. I wonder what that could mean. <laughs> uh. Maybe do some scouting. I don't know. <laughs> Talk, speaking about a decent jungler, let's go on to World Elite. Now they had a very World Elite. <laughs> world Elite had a pretty World Elite esque week where they just they were on the dumps. But there was one game where it's quite. It's one of those games where you realize, wait a minute, this composition. Oh my God, Aluka got Scion. Wait a minute, Spirit got Nidalee. What? <laughs> That was the worst draft I've ever seen. <laughs> I couldn't believe they got both of those champions. That was just ridiculous. I feel like, like something went terribly, terribly wrong. Yeah, <laughs> like, like how UP had just come off of 2 0ing EDG, which I'm sure we'll talk about, and then yeah. they give World Elite Scion in Italy. And it was the way in which they 2 0 EDG, too, where they they targeted Clear Love, <laughs> like they looked for Clear Love and sought him out and killed him repeatedly, so it's like the idea that they really understood EDG as a team better than I feel a lot of their opponents do, and then they just like, <laughs> we're just not gonna bother with WE scouting at all, we're just gonna yeah. wing it, we're gonna play some Blue Ash, it's gonna be an <laughs> epic time! <laughs> oh my god. Uh, I'm not as bad about the Blue Ash as I am about letting Spirit have and it's not just Italy. Spirit like I feel like Aluka. there's really no reason why that should ever happen. And it's not just Spirit and Aluka either. Like she is best meta champion is Cassiopeia. That's what he was playing. Mm -hmm. uh, Conan's probably best meta champion is Morgana because he's good on the mages and that's what he got. The only yeah. weird one was Mystic was playing Bane, but yeah. whatever. I mean, yeah, he can get good. carried. He gets carried anyway. I can just imagine. <laughs> I can just imagine UP being the most emotion, like emotional team in a sense, because of course they got through three games already. They just have to go into the last game. They're already extremely like happy for the third. Like just a, they beat EDG. B, they had a pretty de like decent game against World Elite, which like you, if you look on the stream, you can just see the excited faces on them, and it's like okay, we're going to the last game, guys. Now how serious were they? <laughs> <laughs> well, the yeah. first game they also played like yeah, Echo Jungle punished like uh, Fizz, yeah. which is bleh, okay. Amy yeah. was and the then first there, that one. was the Blue Ash game. Yeah, punish... I like Amy's Jungle Echo though because I think it suits like it's a it's a champion that suits him um, a lot more. And like I don't know, I'm a huge Amy apologist, I guess, but <laughs> he's done really poorly on like tank junglers. So it's yeah. nice to see another alternative for him where he can actually do a lot of those kind of impressive, aggressive plays that he likes to do. Sometimes, <laughs> like, still with the poor decision-making that he's infamous for, but, like, I, I actually really enjoyed watching him play Echo this week. Then I do think that Unlimited Potential has a little bit more flexibility in this sense just because of how good Hard is at engaging team fights. So yeah. they can get away with non-tank jugglers pretty well. 
Let me tell you guys a secret, okay, about the Amy Echo thing. I was in a call with Razzleplazen when the Edward <laughs> Gaming vs. Unlimited Potential set began, and they locked in first pick Echo, and he yeah. says, Oh no, this is an Amy pick. <laughs> Please no! I don't want this to be an Amy pick! No! No, stop! <laughs> and then it was like 10 minutes into the game, and UP was ahead, and but he was convinced they were to lose, so he's just like, I'm bitch. so done. I'm gonna go play video games. And he comes back and he's like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah, legitimately. Like, literally from the pick band phase, I was just like, the moment Echo was locked in, I was like, don't try and fool me and think you can, like, flex this shit. This is going to the jungle. I don't think this is going to... This is such an Amy pick. Because he just wants to find a way. Like, literally... Okay. Amy is, like, a jungler who's so desperate. I feel like... I Maybe I'm... He's so desperate to go back to, like, what he was so good at in the past. Which was literally just trying to find a way to carry a game. Lock Lee Sin and it would just be fine. Like, he could carry whatever shitter team he has on. And that would be great. And then now he's picking, like, it's such an awkward meta for him. He picks Gragas, I guess Gragas can be a carry in some sense, but like, he's not gonna do any real damage on that. And he's just like, so he finds himself going too deep and just getting like destroyed. And he's like, oh God, you know, if I was on Lee Sin, this wouldn't happen, but that's a horrible <laughs> pick. Now in comes Echo. Literally, he can go in and it's just fine. Like, he's a tank. Technically, like he pick he builds tanks, but like a Echo just builds like has a ridiculous amount of damage in his kit just based off of his two passives, like the percentage health passive and of course like the, the three hit ridiculousness. Yeah, but the smack him three times. The thing that scales on levels, the thing that scales on AP, and the thing that just yeah. like I don't know scales it's... when you breathe funny. Like... <laughs> <laughs> just gives you massive amount of damage. It's just like, oh, you, it's, yeah. it's about five minutes into the game, we should just give you some extra damage here for no reason. Good go. <laughs> <laughs> so he picks Echo and I'm like, no, it's, I mean, I'm happy for him. Like, if, but, because uh, obviously he found his his way out of this goddamn meta that he hates. <laughs> he could have been undefeated. He could have been 3-0 on Echo. He could have. <laughs> he could have, if they hadn't given They had Italy. to let Spirit have Nidalee. Yeah, that was so bad. Oh my God. But yeah, like, uh, immediately I can just, like, going into the EDG games, I was like, this is, this game, I don't give a damn how many mistakes that e EDG's making. I was like, okay, EDG can make mistakes because they can make mistakes. They're going up against UP. I'm done with this game. <laughs> I was like, I tune out, and apparently I come back 2-0. And I'm like, what the? I just... Do you know who had 100% kill participation in that game, Raz? Do you know? Do you know the first game? Amy. <laughs> Do you know who had the highest kill participation in the second game, Raz? <laughs> God damn it, man. He's back! Amy. He's back! No, he's not! <laughs> not really. Uh, I love unlimited Amy. potential is nothing if not inconsistent. I really. Yeah. I yeah. like Amy because he's one of those players like Insect, like Loveling, who got completely destroyed. By the Cinder Hulk meta, so. Yeah. Uh, Guess what well, he played last night, though, in Demacia Cup. Oh, I haven't even actually seen it. What did he play? He played Lee Sin. That was the game they lost. <laughs> 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 to be well, fair, their entire draft was pretty like, bad. Yeah. With, like no damage. Except for Punish, who was playing Victor, and then he decided, <laughs> oh, God, after his so great bad. performance against Edward Gaming, he went up against Maple Knight, and he was like. And got Dumpster. He was like, oh, right, I'm punished. I'm supposed to die randomly in lane. And yeah, then. yeah. <laughs> he remembered, like, what am I doing <laughs> with my life? Oh, this wait. is who I am. A I gotta build my brand. <laughs> it's like he thought he was free of it when the name change in, in, Devasi, in uh, LPL because he's, okay, I've been sufficiently punished. This is my badge of honor. I no longer have to die randomly in lane. <laughs> and then he goes into Demacia Cup, back down to the LSPL teams. Who know him and love him. Yeah. He's like, you no, can't I fool me. I got you. you. You're still Apollo. <laughs> You're still, still Apollo. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, turn the name off. If you go into the feature in League of Legends, it's like going. You just like name. Look at the names. You turn it off in the settings, and suddenly, you know, is... he hasn't been punished <laughs> enough. That's that's. that's he that's hasn't been punished enough. <laughs> really bad LSPL jokes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, Let's go. So yeah, hard as a god. That's that's 
Fish it's in the notes, good. by the way. Heart is a god, and that is that is the truth. Okay. I actually kind of hope that UP can continue going with their interesting team dynamic and just having like more carry oriented junglers, and then like Scatch just continues playing supporty like utility based carries because I think it's really unique, and I don't think any other team does it. Where like their AD carry literally runs something with utility every game, and it's it's funny because like they still get away with shit that like shouldn't work anymore or for like the last two years like they're like really random five man bush ganks and stuff like they were <laughs> punishing Koro really hard in the second game after taking early towers doing that and it was I don't know it was just really funny it was it's like wow the that's, fact that Hart it's so it's so fun to watch in 2015 LPL just five people <laughs> come out and kill someone whoops <laughs> oh. <laughs> didn't see that coming oh man my favorite was when Hart was literally like walking around by himself inside <laughs> Evelyn's jungle. Like I'm Annie, yeah. <laughs> and then like this, this yeah. was good early on because obviously Annie has like a lot of upfront burst. But then even at la later levels, like no one was with yeah, him. Just wandering he was around. just wandering around. Some random support. Like he was levels behind too because he did <laughs> so much roaming. So if Clearlove had found him, he would just, like, insta-die. But he was just wandering around, warning off Clearlove's camps, and Clearlove was like, I don't understand why I can't get a gank off. What is happening here? <laughs> so we pretty much touched on it. So how did... Down to the crux of it. How did EDG get too old into those games? Like, Emily, let's start with you. Amy. It's all Amy. <laughs> 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 it was all Amy's Echo Jungle. He was amazing. Yeah. Um, no, it's the first game, I guess you can kind of give EDG a bit of a pass, because obviously they were playing Amazing J, and I think that's what kind of the attitude after that game was like, okay, we're going to play seriously now, we're going to go into the second game, and you see through the pick bands, I think uh, UP really prepared for the Clear Love Evelyn, and they picked Twisted Fate for Punished, and, like, uh, we crap on him a lot, but Punished actually did play, like, probably the best I've honestly ever seen him play in that yeah. second game against CDG. Super and so. they were, their vision was super on point, thanks to Hart. Like, he was, the, it's, like, at level one, he's just sitting, like, Auto attacking Clear Love as he's trying to take Red Buff. Like, it's. He followed him around the jungle for the first bit. Like, he got really deep vision down, wasn't punished for it by EDG. And then they had the Twisted Fate pick. So, whenever Twisted Fate ulted, they found Clear Love, they jumped on him, and they killed him. Mm -hmm. And it was a really. I thought it showed a lot of thought in terms of, like, how EDG works. Um. And I thought, because, like, the first game, you can kind of write off, like, Daft is on Callista. He's obviously not comfortable in that champion. Um, again, they had Amazing J. The second game, they played their, like, actual roster. And UP came up with a really good plan to shut down Clear Love and win the game. And I thought it was really smart. And then they go and give... Spirit in Italy against WE, and then you're like, okay, you're still unlimited potential. But like, yeah. I I like seeing them hit because like they've always been kind of a team that you watch them and you're like, okay, you have good ideas, but not necessarily the best execution of those mm -hmm. ideas. And I feel like this is one of the times when we finally got to see not only did they have a really good game plan going in, but then they also were able to execute it well, which is like it was cool. It was it was really nice to see. Like uh, I don't think UP is gonna suddenly storm the rankings and like you know yeah. rock it up or anything like that but i liked seeing all the pieces come into play like fit into place and then the mm. random heart wandering defense like if he did get in trouble he could get like the destiny gate to come in so <laughs> yeah. could have been that's okay on that's honestly true though yeah yeah. I mean, you're, you you have so much more freedom to roam around as a support by yourself because of that. And then mm -hmm. if you do get caught out, then you have like four seconds of stun. Well, maybe not four seconds, but a lot of stun. So, so the, yeah. Woo! Like, Half it has his stun up. Some clear love catches him. He's like, oh no, stun. And then he's suddenly a genius after all. the destiny gate comes down and bam, clear love is dead. Very like... dramatic telling of <laughs> the clear love experience. It's just so sad because... <laughs> Talking about Clear Love dying, I mean, his KDA is usually monstrous. It's just oh, something that, that never happens. It's very uh, solemn. So, going into this week, right at the beginning, we were blessed with an amazing set between LGD and IG. Hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Now, LGD is on the up and up. IG is basically as they, their IG, they're the same. So. They're just, yeah, I mean, like, yeah. IG, dumpster fire, it's traditionally even difficult to <laughs> tell the difference. It's about that time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So how do you, what you guys come out of this that uh, set feeling? Do you think that I LGD is starting to pr- pick it up, or that IG is? I don't even. What do we I don't expect? Know. It wasn't like, even. To be honest, it wasn't even like a strategically interesting or advanced set. It was just like, oh my gosh, Yasu Echo Duels. Yeah. Woo. Thanks yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Fuck shit up! Let's go! Yeah. Them like dashing at each other. I mean, it was really to, like... fun to watch, and like, Rookie and Godby are obviously really good players, but mm-hmm. that's pretty much the, the appeal of that second game. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I loved when they were trying to duel in the river, and then Schwinn comes in, and Willis is just like, Get out of here! I could have done that on my own. Could have <laughs> killed him. <laughs> He'd be dead. That all being said, all right. So, what's up with IG? I wanna, I wanna pose this question to you guys because I've expressed my displeasure of, I guess, like their bot lane playstyle, mostly just kitties. But do you think it's just a strategical thing? Do you think any players have like certain quirks that they need to get set up for them to be really, I guess, not even just consistent, but just like an actual Top, top, top team. EDG level, I suppose. So there's... Kelsey. Actually, gonna start... uh, oh, you're gonna start with who? You. Oh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good! So there's actually a lot of context going on in this, because there's been a lot of drama in the Chinese scene surrounding IG for a little bit. It started with their Demacia Cup set a couple weeks ago, actually, um, where they played... And like Mafa didn't, sh- and Mafa showed up for drafts, but their Chinese coach did not. Uh, oh, and then uh, and then uh, Mafa supposedly, and Mafa has been like not showing up and then showing up again. So yeah. and when the Chinese coach is there, it's like, oh, your drafts are bad. But there's not really a difference between the Chinese coach and Mafa's drafts be- right now because I guess, according to their manager who did an AMA. The Chinese, no. like, Mafa is refusing to do drafts right now because the Chinese players, or not just the Chinese players, but the players in general, don't respect him enough. Ah. So he's just having the players do their own drafts. But then, this the Chinese coach comes out and he writes this massive blog yeah. post. Uh-oh. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> and at one point he's like, oh, we decide on the drafts together. There's no difference between my drafts and Moffa's drafts. We are the same person. We were pair at the same time. And uh-huh. then he's like, and you he are not... kept saying, I'll have you know. <laughs> he's like, I'll have you know. Guess what? You are I'll not actual you. IG fans. You can continue <laughs> to flame if you want, but real IG fans would support us right now. <laughs> what is wrong with you? I about Kid Interesting, though. Yeah, yeah, I think that was, like, out of all of that, I, that's the only one I actually considered not 100%. BS, to be honest. Like, the the manager AMA was very straightforward. He was like, yeah, Mafa is, is just streaming a lot, pretty much, right mm. now, and he doesn't feel like the players respect him, so he doesn't want to do picks and bans. Uh, we really want to replace Kid. <laughs> wow. Yeah, he actually yeah. said that, but we... And he essentially said that, like, the no one is... Both me and the coaching staff are too lazy, essentially, to scout for a replacement. Is effectively mm. what he said. We almost had we almost had a. Uh, yeah, obviously situation. I'm having someone else translate this for me, so I'm yeah. not entirely sure word for word what he says, but mm-hmm. it was interesting. And then like this guy comes out, and it's a very different picture, right? He talks about how you, IG is united. The only problems that were happening were like technical management issues, and he got suspended for a while because he went over the manager's head and reported the problems with the toilet overflowing oh my God. <laughs> because the yeah, managers gets, like, were fixing stuff. it. It was like, what is this? Everything is fine, people. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> but it's okay. At, we scrim at 2 o'clock. It is fine. We, we're all united. We're all on one page. We all want to win. We are just sad that we <laughs> so lost to EDG. Times. We're the most united we've ever done. The most, but the... We don't really want to do drafts. 
The section just, on kid, though. Just don't want to plan right or now. Or close games and, you know, other fundamental things. The like context for yeah. kid. <laughs> so, I like to ham- I have my own personal kid theory. Like, when yeah. kid first started playing League of Legends, he was actually a mid laner. And the reason why they recruited him is because he kind of- He dumpstered Messiah in one game. And they're like, oh, you're really good. Join our team as the AD carry. Mm. And then, so he became the- the team that was ADK. so long ago, though. That, that yeah, was, like, yeah. Those I know, skills could almost be seen as interchangeable. Yeah. And then him and Zatai used to swap back and forth anyway. Like Zatai would sometimes play AD carry and he would play mid and back and forth. But hmm. uh, then um, what happened was he was placed with his support with Xiao Xiao. So my point is just like his experience as an AD carry. That's the only reason I talked about that. Because his experience with, as an AD carry has been with Xiao Xiao and Kitties entirely. And Xiao Here we Xiao. Go. Here we go. It's not the best player in terms of mechanics and ability <laughs> to lane and um, just generally doing support like things. Mm -hmm. uh, and so Kid and Shasha would play like really passively to avoid trying to do 2v2 altercations. So he wasn't like an extremely like he would still make plays and be somewhat aggressive. And then they picked up Kitties, and the bottom lane last year was a little bit more aggressive, and after PDD left, like, Kid kind of rose up to take up the mantle of the carry, and he was much more positional and all this other stuff. Then he had a couple bad games, and people... And there was actually this point where, because Zatai became the shot caller after PDD left, and they're like, Oh, Zatai is garbage and random, he should not be the shot caller, Kid is doing so well, he should be the shot caller. It's like, yes, this makes perfect logical sense. <laughs> and then Kid... <laughs> Kid started performing poorly, like had a couple of bad sets or something. Um, but Kid actually like carried the games, the two games that IG has ever won against EDG were carried by Kid effectively. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, he has a couple of bad games, and the community starts criticizing him, as the community does. So he starts playing like really passively again, and then IG just like becomes the steaming garbage trash can that we remember from the end of last split, or not last split, but last year. Um, mm -hmm. where Satai was just like chasing people willy nilly and trying to kill them. Um, and then now Kid is just like the safe player and he doesn't do much and he sometimes only does 400 damage on Vayne in a single game. Yeah. Yeah. It's really awesome. So the guy said that Kid, the coach said that Kid is looking to retire and that Pokemon almost played AD carry for a game. Oh, God. Let's That's like just so forget. Story. Let's forget he ever <laughs> said that. Then Kid got a quadra kill in the first game against RNG, so it's like, no, I will convince him to stay in. It will be miraculous and magnificent. And then Kid, because he had no pressure, quote unquote, to perform, which doesn't make any sense to me, because if you're choosing to stay in when you could have been subbed out, I would think that would increase the amount of pressure. <laughs> but okay! <laughs> you, you had Quadra, you must get Penta now. Yeah. <laughs> Quadra must get Penta. But he plays uh, Callista, and then him and Kitties do extremely well. I wouldn't say they carried, because I feel like every single person did well that game, and like Zatai ended up like 1v5-ing, or 1v4-ing at the end of the game on Trundle, so... Yeah. yeah, so I, I must know. ask you guys, because now that we hear of this internal struggle, is Kid really to blame? I know people are just going to say, oh, actually, we might find something surprising. Emily, what do you think about this matter? I actually was surprised to find that people were criticizing Kid so much, because while I don't, again, like, to Kelsey's point, he's not the most aggressive AD carries. There are a lot of times where I think he misses, like, an opportunity to trade. Um, but at the same time, I actually don't think he's been performing specifically badly, and especially not enough to, like, warrant the kind of, um, criticism that he's apparently received from the fan community. And then additionally, when IG started, like, slumping this year, right, like, it was, it was right after they lost that really close game to EBG, where they basically just, like, threw the game, and, like, he, I don't know, you, like, you can't blame that on kids really and then they threw like yeah. warrior nocturne and it was just bad and so i mean i think kid is serviceable for what they want but they have to make better in-game decisions and as a team collectively they have to 
like uh, the the LGD game. Like I was surprised that they won a game two because like they rarely win game twos because if they lose the first game, then they just kind of like bleh, whatever, like roll over and die. And yeah. that kind of returned with their EDG loss, and they obviously haven't looked as good uh, as they did previously after that set. So I think, like, a lot of the problems that that team had, first of all, if, they're, if they are having, like, coaching and management issues, that is going to affect the team regardless. And then secondly, I think a lot of their issues in-game are more like uh, – their overall play style of like kind of waiting until the late game and then that in its in and of itself is not a bad thing but when they make incorrect decisions late obviously that that means a lot more because they're not really a team who's garnering a lot of like super early advantages in game and so i think i mean i don't i don't really place a ton of the blame on kid like could he do better yeah but like i don't think you can point to that team and be like Kid is the problem. Like, get rid uh -oh. of him. You know. Et cetera, okay. Et so, shot calling and early game movement. Damn. I feel like there should be a position in which that you know <laughs> that is, a certain player should help out in that role. Michael. Yeah, I you... actually don't agree with blaming Kid at all. I feel like Kid yeah. is like criminally underrated, actually. Yeah. And I think he's very good. And you have to understand like the makeup of their team. He was never going to be the main carry threat. Like he's always a, he's a cleanup eighty carry, he's a janitor eighty carry, and that's what he's good at, and he's decent at doing that. I've never watched a I, well, I won't say I've never watched. I've, I've I generally don't see games where IG fails to close against better teams and think like, oh man, if Kid would have positioned better, or gotten more autos, and they would have won that fight. It's usually strictly decision making, poor engages, like you know issues around that, like. You can't really look at Kid and be like, okay, this is this. His, the fault of the team is that this guy, like, he's only like a top six eighty carry. Like, <laughs> if they, he was like top two, it'd be better. Like, it doesn't work that way because one, he's not getting the resources, and two, we've seen him hard carry before when he does have it, and he's probably the best Israel in the fucking region. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe that's a bit. No, I, I actually mean, think no. Deft. I'd deft say deft. No, I mean, besides deft. Deft. But like, when you have issues like coaches having nerve problems to go on stage and help and then you have to send the manager up to do picking bands or when you have players like getting antsy and misclicking bands in drafting phase and then you like put the blame on kid like no there's severely like other underlying issues a lot of it is just ig not like taking this shit seriously like honestly yeah. that's what it is like they're just not taking issues like this seriously the team too they like they're just very carefree and like, I don't know, they're, they're all, like, playing for fun, and they're all, like, really young guys, and so, I don't know. I don't think the issue is Kid, and I think Kid is actually doing exactly what he should do in the team. You can't have, like, four threats. It just doesn't work that way. There's only so much of what you can pull from off of Summoner's Rift, and I think given what he does, he's he's good, quite good at it, honestly. Not okay. the best. He's not the best AD carry. He's not, like, a top three or anything like that. But, like, like Emily said, he's serviceable. And I th I don't think that he's serviceable in the mean of, like, oh, he'll do, like, he can shoot things and right-click. I think he's actually good at what he does, yeah. despite yeah. not being a top, like, top player in the position. Do you think there is a player, and I'm going to direct this at you, Michael, uh, that does need a replacement? Do you think it's an entire, just, like, a team managerial issue? If they get their shit together, they can actually have some decent games, or do you think at least one player needs to be either swapped out, just in terms of individual play, because obviously we don't have the context in terms of, like, personality, comms, etc. Uh, I don't think it's a player issue. Even if we were to say that kid is the weakest link, if you read the the post from the coach about why he's the weakest link, a lot of it result, revolves down to pressure and how he feels that kid is actually really strong, but pressure gets to him. Like mm -hmm. that comes down to like a psychological issue or like a mentality issue. And that could be anywhere from just like psychological, psychological problems. That could be nerves. It could be improper arrest and practice. It could be, uh, what should I call it? He's seventeen. Yeah, he's young. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, it could be, it could be like a discipline. I don't know. It could be any. Mm. It, it just all of these things. Like, even if they did have to replace kid, like I feel like it would actually be a disservice to the team because the problem is an underlying issue that doesn't have to do with the plat. Like the, these players being skill plateaued. Yeah. Like it's not like they're yeah. just their talent is an issue. It's underlying. So I don't think that would really fix anything to replace them unless they did manage to get someone else that was a star carry but as we've seen with other teams that like used to be top two like just throwing a top 80 carry in a team that had a mediocre 80 carry 
okay, so like Sonda Uzi, like obviously that doesn't always just work, you know? So I don't know. Well, especially I mean, I, with IG where like uh, it's pretty obvious that like Rookie is the main yeah. carry mm-hmm. of that team and then like... And, and the especially time, in this meta, you know? Yeah, the like AD carries are not the star there. in this meta. It's like the time for Rookie to shine. So like even focusing on Kid not carrying hard enough being the problem is just kind of dumb and I think it, it's kind of... I don't know, it's just... It's just really unintelligent because of like the way mm-hmm. the game plays out right now. Mm-hmm. Especially, in it, it feels like they cut down any potential for growth because they're literally just creating an issue that doesn't exist, it seems like. Um, so with that being said, I don't know, what do you guys do? Is there anything about this week's LPL that you guys want to uh, get out there before we move on to... Quite the bomb that just happened. I uh, uh, apologize. Yeah, I'm, I'm having a uh, thunderstorm apparently. <laughs> so if my computer fries, it's either because it's heat exhausted or I got struck by lightning. So, um, because <laughs> it's really really hot here and a thunderstorm. It's excellent. Wow, that is that is a beautiful combination. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so I guess the the one light spot of all the drama is the kid did post to his thing and said that you know. Thank you for thank you community for all of your criticisms and your flame. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> it has motivated me to become better again. Flight. That's my favorite. That is beautiful. Uh, there's, there's one person who needs to get flamed, and uh, I feel like nobody in that team should get flamed. But if they if you direct the flame at anybody, to be, <laughs> get kitties out of the fucking lane. <laughs> <laughs> One of these Kitties days. is not good at roaming, I don't think. He's actually uh, okay, better at laning, but I think his champion pool is somewhat limited. I think he's very good at Thresh and yeah. Janna, and that's it's, about yeah. it. It's like if he yeah. ha- if they find if they pick Ezreal for the lane, if they pick Corky, it's like oh great, they have a nice AD carry that's very like you know self sustainable. You can deal. Yeah, it's all good. No wait, Kitties is not gonna leave the fucking lane. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. That's, yeah, that's and perfect. it's it's pretty because that that makes a lot of that's the way you put it is actually mm-hmm. very apt because that's what kid plays. He yeah. plays like his traditionally his best champions have always been Triforce AD yeah. carries. Yeah. So, yeah. That's, that's if there's anybody out, if like literally, I just everybody wants to blame kid. I used to blame kid, but I found the real answer. I found the real answer. It's actually kitties. It's, it's always kitties. on IG. It's, it's just always the support. The support always, I've always been one to uh, like eternally support kid and San as, as good AD carries and felt the weight and pressure against me. But <laughs> it happens, you know. It happens. Like if you're gonna have kitties on that actually, team, like God, learn how to play Callista. Play it every fucking yeah, game. Yeah, agreed. Then, I actually do agree that kid needs to get good at Callista. It's perfect for that duo. Yeah, so that's all I want to see. Well, they played it, and it worked really well against RNG. They yeah. raffled pretty hard. I was like, why <laughs> would you pick, why would you opt into this 2v2? <laughs> Don't you realize that Callista <laughs> and, and Annie is going to the destroy you? <laughs> I don't, the storm is like, yes! This is like actually somewhat alarming. Because, yeah. So I think just briefly before we move on away from LPL, just address the fact that Godby might not be playing this weekend for LGD. How do we think that will affect the team? I don't think it will affect the team as much as PYL not being there, but it will affect the team in that I feel like... Have you seen like, Yellow play? No, I have not. <laughs> but what I'm going to talk about is how LGD works, and how LGD works is by hiding, for the most part, TVQ. And a lot of that has to do with the way that Gabi plays in and out of lane. Yeah. And I think uh, not having that basically it definitely hampers LGD's chances to be successful. I've always felt like LGD was very, I wouldn't say reliant. But kind of expecting when it, like they've expected 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 they've always expected kind of like God V to do really well in his lane they'll he will pick whatever he plays I don't know what like he'll play whatever he wants God knows what he'll pick yes. uh, you can actually he, usually find out what he'll pick by looking at his solo queue account because he's very telegraphing about it <laughs> okay well there you have it there you go. <laughs> 
he roams quite well, and I feel like that's they they rely on that synergy. Whether they won't have they uh, uh, they won't have it with yellow, but that's I don't expect the good games. That's about all I'm gonna say with that one. Um, I mean, it can't possibly be as bad as when PBL is missing. So yeah, yeah, it's gonna be yeah. Anyone else? Any other comments about the LPL this split this week? This week, um, nothing. See, OMG is going to reap the benefits. UCI oh, yeah. getting the success, the the luck in the burst of worlds because they're supposed to face LGD this weekend. So, <laughs> and Cool is just gonna look at Yellow like this is delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for this offering. First pick me. <laughs> First... <laughs> oh God, no. Uh, yeah. All right, all right. So let's move on now. Uh, gonna do a coin flip. Pop, 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 pop. Bam. And we're gonna go to. LSPL. It's the LSPL. <laughs> That's a very convincing coin flip. Blop, 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 blop. Damn. Oh, man. LSPL. All right. So, we've gone through quite a bit of it. What's the first take? I'm going to go to Kelsey first, since I always love seeing those tweets. <laughs> <laughs> like, come out live for an LSPL. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's talk about... Hmm. Let's talk about Group A for a bit. We're going to go group for group. Okay. Star Home Road Club, Showtime, Newbie, and 2144 Gaming. I love the I love the name of these teams. Uh, so, surprise, surprise. What what can you take out of this group? Chelsea. I mean, Sask is pretty much destroying people. That's that's it. Sask is assassin from King. Yeah. Uh, Star Home Road Club. I think they've only lost one game so far. Mm -hmm. So. Yep. It's good showtime yeah. pipe is dead. <laughs> Show, the showtime, showtime died. Pipe is dead, but yeah. they tied with Starhorn. So there's always that hope. <laughs> so, so now apparently the new the new uh, hype, or at least like the, the one thing you can take out of this group is which teams leaving out alive. Is it going to be uh, newbie Showtime or two one? Four four gaming because apparently Starhorn Road Club is actually just doing really well. That's one team I just did not expect to come out of the gate. I mean, I, I don't know. I guess the newbie and Showtime hype was always turning out to be like it was really uh, strong. They have Gamty's coach, ex Gamty's coach, and they have Sask, so it's like really solid. Yeah. Set from there. Um, I forget who else do they have. I'm like blanking. Blank. Yeah, blank, blank. Is really yeah, blank, blank, blank. Yeah. Blank, blank was the jungle uh, is really solid. Blank, good old Kami. I love the four bot. I'm, I just love. I call him the four bot link. And my favorite is that they're eight carries away, so yeah. they're doomed. <laughs> <laughs> Way the Callista only player. <laughs> Literally, just always pick Callista. That's just how life is, apparently. Damn. So yeah, that's always good. Almost as good as Khan being the starting top laner for newbie. Oh yeah. Uh, this is where Raz's pain is. Like he can't, he wanted uh, newbie to do so well. He was like, "Oh, Yuja and Candy, the best bot lane in the world." <laughs> but it's like so, they're good. You would not expect that bot lane to be like. Obviously, you hear the name. You know how they've done an L LPL, and you're like, "Yeah." Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know. But then they they perform pre like all right. They're really good. They actually just pick into bad lanes and then do okay. Like they do well. Like nine more than just okay, they do well. But then I don't know. Apparently, newbie, just like the can the curse of Khan. Like you you take that you take him out of the World Elite Future, and I'm like super happy because I love World Elite Future and I want them to prosper. But then. You, you put them on newbie when they have limit and it's like what's the point of even having the LSPL like <laughs> <laughs> starting video if the man coming out of the vehicle <laughs> is not even started so exactly. many of those players are not starting yeah. anymore like um, yeah. Amel was replaced by Crisis who is actually really good so yeah. there's that it's always nice um played middle did well one of those one of those middle league players that you actually have to mention because it's like, hey, you had a good game. <laughs> like that's rare in this meta. <laughs> yeah. Like... <laughs> he plays he played the Sejuani last night. He tilted Name really hard really, really hard. Name oh, got extremely that. tilted. He was like really mad. Apparently Name yeah. is, is the flaming type. 
Uh, uh, I don't know if he was originally the flaming type or not, but if I were him after all this time, I probably would become the flaming type. Not handling. Losing uh, <laughs> to EPA in under 20 minutes uh, is pretty... Yeah, it was pretty bad. <laughs> it was awful. Um, that sounds and, amazing. Then he played Lucian and he was like, it's okay, we'll see, like, you guys, we're okay, we're fine, I'll just play a good laner, we'll just we'll be okay, and then, like, after he's like, I'm fucking playing Jinx. <laughs> Yeah, let's, let's move on. Group B. God, Group B. Uh, Hyper Youth Group Gaming. T-Bear Gaming. T uh, 2144. I'm just trying to find a new way to say this team's name without, like, the awkwardness, but it's just going to happen. I'm going to call him Danmi Gaming. Yeah, there we go. An EPC. Oh, boy. Oh, All right. EPC. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, T-Bear Gaming. Uh... <laughs> T-Bear Gaming. <laughs> I hate T Bear Gaming so much. I love the team the moment you get into the like like of course you see the logo, you see the the players, the players themselves. Go eat, yeah. Go eat, like and then they start playing. Why do you have Bobo mid? It's my only <laughs> concern. Bobo. Bobo Anyone who is mid. Bobo. Yeah, Bobo is. yeah. Bobo uh, has a history with TNT. Yeah. Uh, TNT used to play for VG Gaming S and he got benched for Bobo for reasons no one can really understand. Oh, <laughs> and now, um, uh, their better mid laner, it's T Bear Gaming's better mid laner, Chinghua, has been replaced by Bobo. Also, for reasons we don't understand. It's so. just Bobo is just finding <laughs> a way to these teams. Love That's... will find a way, Raz. <laughs> Bobo will find <laughs> Bobo will find a way. Bobo is like the. Luca of LSPL. <laughs> He's probably the extremely positive guy. That's just, yeah. That's what kills the team. So let's just immediately grow to the, the the juicy group. I love this. Hyper group. Youth Gaming. Don't you love okay, Hyper fine. Youth Gaming? Come on. I actually really do like Hyper Youth. Gaming. I love watching them. It's like They're the only team that I actually love watching. The rest is just <laughs> like, oh, uh, this team, this like one player is pretty good. And Hyper Youth Gaming is the same, where they have like some good players and stuff. But then they just like do stupid stuff all the time. Yeah. It's really hilarious to watch. Like. They own it though. Like yeah. they, they make I such terrible too. decisions sometimes. <laughs> I've only seen like one <laughs> set from them, and I just. <laughs> so but see, like I feel like they're such a fun team to watch. Like, like you can have a team that makes terrible decisions, and they'll just be really boring, right? But yeah. Hyper Youth Gaming is not one of those teams. <laughs> like, I like that Seventeen is a god on Fizz and LSPL. Yeah. <laughs> Mike is like, uh, <laughs> LSPL talk. I'm like, yeah, I know what's going on here. <laughs> His eyes are blazing. He's like, yeah. no. Dude. Well, and then you have YOLO, who used to be in the, uh, in, who was supposedly oh, yeah. going to play for, yeah. what was it, Winter Support Fox, for right? Winter Fox, yeah. yeah, and then now he's jungling. What was his name again? I almost forgot his old gaming. name. Imagine. Imagine, there we go. Imagine for Winter Fox. Then went to this team. Good stuff, YOLO. He's not uh, bad. He's not bad. No. He's not he's the best LSPL jungler, but he's not the worst, so that's good for him. That's what I realize about, like, if you find a mediocre to, like, okay Korean, you put him on a team here, <laughs> they end up doing rather well. Unless if your name is Khan. Anyways, yeah. group. That works for Snake. <laughs> my, theory, <laughs> my theory about that is, like, if you had Energy Pacemaker All, who had... A really like Amel who is like not that good of a Korean versus yeah. the one they wanted which was Kim Good. So they had like the two Koreans on it at first because that helped them communicate with the Chinese players and know the Chinese players and once they were worked in and they had the synergy down, they like removed Amel. It's like, okay, here's an actual good jungler. Who's Chinese <laughs> Now oh, that you can communicate that. with the rest of your team. And they did that with WE Future too, I think. They like wanted Old B, so they're like, Oh, we'll just throw Khan up here and it'll be okay. And he can it's like train fine. Old B to learn play with the team. And then they brought back their actually good Chinese top laner. <laughs> um, yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. So! Good stuff. There's, there's this group here. Called... <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> This is group here. Let's get on to this group. Uh, it's called Group C. Lovely group. Has the great upcoming team called ADG. Uh, 
the only team to have not. Now I guess OMG hasn't won one either. But the only yeah. team to be really, really bad. Yeah. And not win a single game. Yeah. Really, really bad. That's what happens <laughs> when you. They're basically. I love. I've heard a lot of reek uh, like similarities in a lot of ways. But it's like if you had a lot of pride in a team. They have so much, like, their, their talent is obvious, and then you just cut everything about it. You cut their dignity, you cut <laughs> their, and suddenly what you have, what you have left, the bare minimums, you have mouse top. And you just... <laughs> nope. and mouse just, top. Mouse top, and you just... How do you feel uh, about the concept of mouse top, Jackson? Uh, I feel like that sounds awful, but I can't really gauge it until I actually watch it, so... Yeah. But, so that's why I asked something. you about the concept, I mean, so... he wasn't, he wasn't exactly incredible support, so... Maybe he'll... He used to be a mid lane main, so he's just, like, making oh. the tour. He's going around the world. Just doing his young. Yeah, he's <laughs> just she younging it. <laughs> this, this is his world, he just goes <laughs> Yeah, that is literally a Xiong mid oh, yeah. top. It is. Yep. It's, it's Good so stuff. Feel bad for that team. That's what happens when you decide that, you know what? We need our main team, EDG. That needs to be the ground for where players learn how to play, except for, you know, one player who's literally not playing a game. Yep. That's his, that, I forgot his name. Jin Zhao? <laughs> <laughs> Jin no. Zhao isn't playing either, Raz. Come on, oh, Jin Zhao. share the life. <laughs> Ray, Ray, literally is not playing a game. God knows what reason. Like, he could play they... top with Jin Zhao AD carry. <laughs> Jin Zhao is a death. They're Jin not Zhao. gonna take death out of that long. What if Jin Zhao is a god Callista player and they don't this even not... know? I don't even want it. What know. if this happens? <laughs> what if this is not true? Something I want to test. So for anybody who doesn't know what's happening. Literally, okay, ADG has been stripped from Bay Me, Bai Me, I don't know, whatever, and Ray. So Bai Me, you can tell, he's like, if you look at LPL, it's fun, like, he's playing games. He's like, you put him on there, it's all good and, it's all good and fun. He's, he's having some great games. Uh, Ray, he's not playing anything. He's not playing at all. Why? Because they have a Chinese top laner and two Koreans on EDG. So if they want to put Ray up there, they're gonna to have to replace their two Koreans. So who's what are they gonna replace? Are they gonna replace uh, Pawn? Well, guess what? They don't have a Chinese mid laner. Okay. Uh, are they gonna replace uh, Deft? Ha <laughs> ha! No, they're not gonna replace Deft. Like you know, this is a learning experience for Ray, where he's just sitting on a bench doing nothing. My theory is that he wanted to get out of ADG so badly that he didn't care. He just didn't give a damn. Raz. Okay, sorry. Ray, excuse me, literally, <laughs> <laughs> literally took ADG. The fact that Ray is no longer on that team makes them the worst team in LSPL when they used to be the third place LSPL team. So they were like, they were, they, they took e Energy Pacemaker to five games. So they were a game away from facing Master 3 and probably losing to Master 3 and not making LPL anyway, but... Yep. <laughs> He well. did that all on his own with his kale. <laughs> this is all, that's all he needed. With his beautiful kale that they eventually that's banned cool. and destroyed his hopes and dreams. <laughs> that's how you stop him from 1v5ing. <laughs> it's to make him, it's like stop him from being invulnerable to damage. Ban, <laughs> ban Jarvan and kale and he's screwed. He's got nowhere left to go. <laughs> that Jarvan top though, he made me a believer. Yeah. I was like, this is so stupid. I don't even see this. He just builds like straight damage and then he like dives one person and assassinates them and, and then EQs explode. away. The I was like, yes! Yes! <laughs> huh? yes! So did the same thing happen in LPL? Yeah, actually Koro did it yeah. because Ray yeah. was the one who did it, so... The saddest teams. thing about all of this is that like he... Like you saw the success in LSPL. It was it was beautiful to see him just delete the carry and live. It was beautiful. And then you see in, in, re in the promotions match he, you see the concept, and you're like, oh, just just wait, guys. Just, just wait, and you watch it. You see no, all these non-believers. It's like, all right, you can make this work. And then he didn't make it work. And it was that <laughs> thing. My <laughs> favorite was when they were, like, in the upper bracket finals post-patch change. And their their comp that they really relied on was, like, buy me Katarina. Yeah. And then Jarvan top because of the Jarvan-Katarina synergy. And then yeah. it was, like... 
No, this does not work anymore. This is not I'm sorry. Thing. Because my favorite, they were like down two games or no, they were down a game because it was still best of threes, and then Aaron pushes away their like standard coach. He's like, "No, get out of here! I'm gonna do this draft. It's gonna be beautiful." And then there's Jarvin and Katarina, and you're like, "Why? <laughs> Why is this happening to me?" <laughs> so ADG is a dumpster. KX Happy is actually, like, I feel I love this group. They have KX Happy, which is not, mm -hmm. they're okay right now. They're probably not going to make it through, but they, they took do. a game off Chowgu. Yeah. In Devonsi Cup, so. Really? Oh, God. Yeah, but like, that was also, like, there's a caveat to that game. Yeah. Because that was the game was where the Swift Master decided to play game. Master E Jungle. Oh, sad, sad face. <laughs> but I do like KX Happy. They're pretty much the same as last split, except. Without their AD carry, I believe. Yeah, they, they have a yeah. different AD carry, and I actually think they have a different bot lane and a different jungle. So. Kylene was still. Oh yeah, yeah, they still have Kylene. I'm thinking. Sorry, I'm thinking about Legend Dragon. Excuse me. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that so that cool. team, they're okay. Probably not enough to get through. So Young Glory with save top. Yeah, that's save top. And NG Pacemakers. It's actually eight. really surprised when Young Glory two would KX. I, mean, mm. I didn't expect that to happen because I'm not really high on Young Glory. So. I haven't seen that game yet. I'm almost close to watching it. But I'm actually, now that I got spoiled for that one, I'm actually really surprised. <laughs> actually, yeah. I really expected yeah. a lot from KX. Um, going on to the group, the, the beautiful group, the three man. The An three energy pacemaker, group. all, which has Crisis, and then um, oh, yeah, yeah, Jazzo yeah. is actually really good too, their support. So. Really good. And Gim Grun is, is it's funny because Gim Grun like had his ins revenge against Insect last night. It was glorious. <laughs> <laughs> Which like they never yeah. Yeah, I know. They there's no context <laughs> for that at all except that they were like both on KT at one point yeah. somewhere. So. At one point. Yeah. But I still call it revenge because all Koreans know each other. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Trying to go for the revenge. No. So, I don't know. No. I just thought it was funny because Gim Grun is not considered that good of a top laner, and then like Insect was on KT Bullets, and they were at one point like the second best team in Korea, and he played top lane for them at that time, and then yep. he's now a top laner again, and he's really, really bad at top lane, like really, yeah. really terrible. It's yeah. it's really terrible. It's- I can't- I've said this like Good seven man. million times already in the past five seconds and I still want to say it again! He's really terrible right now! God. Yeah, Insect, like, <laughs> I mean, again, like, providing context, there's top lane, he played Shen mm -hmm. and he played Zack when he was OP. And I'm like, when KT rude, was but... doing really well, and, um, it's, uh, watching him from last night, Demacia Cup, uh, he just... Like, has no concept of, like, how to trade in lane, or, like, where to be in lane, or... He's still really good at, like, I'd say the thing he's good at is something he's always been good at, which is, like, kind of initiating on the other team, like, diving a backline, but, like, other than that, he's just not good. I actually think he's no. weirdly good at 2v1-ing. Mm. I think that's just because he isn't tempted to trade in the middle of the Which is wave. weird because then you see him try to like 1v1 trade and he takes like all this minion aggro and you're just like why and like this Well that's what I mean stop. like if he's 2v1ing he's not tempted to 1v1 trade in the middle of the enemy enemy winning wave. <laughs> he's like yes I must play safe and it is fine I don't have to carry have but he's on the 1v1 secrets. he's like oh now he's mad I have to carry this game let's go <laughs> this game, and then he like <laughs> if this is anything like the jungle, if I don't hit these minions, it should be fine. They should not aggro <laughs> onto me. <laughs> it's like, it's like, just need to hit the enemy. And then he played Fizz, and you'd think, oh, he played Fizz jungle, it should be okay. No. His Fizz jungle is significantly better than his Fizz top. Yeah. Yeah. So quickly getting back on this uh, Group D hype. Yeah. Legend Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> future. Uh, sorry, oh I was just scarred by that group, by that set last night, so I just like keep going back to it. But. See, that's fine. I, I I completely understand. Crisis is really good though. That's like the takeaway. Let me know when you yeah. watch Game Two, Res. 
<laughs> well, Crisis Just... is really good in that he can identify that the key to defeating King is by camping their bottom lane, but mm. he seems to be pretty solid. Like, his map movements are pretty good, his dragon control is really good, even yeah. in the LSPL context at least, so I'm excited to see if he can do continue to do well. He'll probably mm. get trapped in LSPL just like every other promising LSPL player like Cherish and 300 and everyone else, but you know, yep. it's pretty awesome. You're an amazing LSPL player, be it support or jungle. Good luck, because those are positions for Koreans. So. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, <laughs> those are the Korean positions. <laughs> it's like, yeah, tough one on that one. And the top, there are a lot of Korean tops in LSPL. But I let, would say let's that's the no. main Korean role in LSPL is top lane. But seriously though, Legend Dragon, Roll Elite Future, are they good teams now? Are they like the best teams in LSPL or not? That's the real question. Because OMG seems to be, OMD, I'm sorry, oh my, oh my dream, <laughs> seems to be oppressed by all of this here. Yes. <laughs> Again, I feel really bad for Tail. Yeah. Tail was Tail. like a solid player, and now he's just like destroyed forever in Group D with a Legend Dragon and WE Future. I just imagine. And Hark, I feel feel really bad for Hark too, or Hawk. Yeah. He was. Hawk, yeah. Well, he he changed his name to Hark. I'm pretty sure. I will forever just call him Hawk. I just don't okay. give a fuck. That's Good like stuff. that's my right. thing with that's my thing with Baka slash Copy. I would much rather call him Copy. I'll still call him Baka, but I don't even care. But it's. I feel sorry for Hawk. I feel sorry for Tail. With Tail, I just. I, I see him as a sad Keanu Reeves because he's just. He, he was out. He was in the LPL. Everything was fine. He requalified for LPL. You know what? Until money was involved, he was good. Now, <laughs> Campy doesn't exist anymore, and he's he's down in LSPL with Oh My Dream. The thing is, is that like of all the people on Ganty. Every single one of them saw some playtime, even Sync Dream, and Hue is a starter for an LPL team right now, and Tails just like, hey guys, how you doing? Hey, you know, I can be a support, dude. I can be a better support. I can be a better support than Sync Dream. <laughs> Sync Dream. Well, yeah, Sync Dream. Uh, that all being said, probably. Three yeah, go on, go on. top lane roster rotation on RNG, though. Yeah, uh, yeah. Let yeah. me Ackerman and Sky. Let's go. We're gonna play all of them. They need to be distributed to other teams. I'm sure <laughs> APG would need a top laner. You by would now. think, given that King is probably owned by the same person, allegedly, uh, oh. that they would grab one of those, maybe. Maybe. Instead of having maybe. But oh, then Insect yeah. would have to play jungle, and I don't think he can jungle in the current meta. I'm sorry, I'm just like fixated on King. Well, well let's anymore. just move on then to uh, Demacia Cup. We've already talked about sorry. a good <laughs> part. <laughs> Actually, we really it. only the talked about one that. set. Yeah. Pretty yeah. much. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. So, what's happening here? What's, let's, let's what's going on? Let's talk about other happened? sets. Uh, round of 32 <laughs> is set. over. Yeah. So. Uh, the matchups for round of 16 are actually pretty interesting. Um, Let's start talking about these matches. Oh wait, you should probably talk about the matches that already happened, I suppose. I suppose. We could, but most yeah. of them were like one-sided stomps from yeah. one an LPL team to an LSPL team, except for the one yeah. that we've already talked about. Yeah, yeah. Which, which... was atrocious. Yeah, <laughs> went to five games. Um, and the other, I guess the LSPL ones, some of them were close, but... Mm. So... EDG, the next set's gonna be like Seth looking forward to round of 16. EDG versus World League Future. Predictions? Do I have to fight? <laughs> I, got this. I think EDG will win this. Michael. Set. All right, all right. I Michael. think 957 is gonna carry this, okay? <laughs> all right. I think there's right. like a 97 3 split here. Yeah. I'm not saying they can't win, but you know. Really? Ooh. 93 is really generous, I think. It's a 97. Oh, and wait. 3 is, okay. yeah, yeah. 3 is yeah. very generous. Alright, yeah. next, next one. M3. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. M3, this is the most hype one for me. M3 versus WE. Really, uh, this is the most hype one for you? 
It's just the names. I love the name. I okay. love the idea that I both like the... are flashing. It's Let's... just you just that the splat sound. That's literally what it is. It's just. I like that the M3 one is on top of the bracket too, so and then the yeah. W, so it's like the literal reflection. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh... Who do you think it's coming out of this one? Decently. Uh, like, do you think it's gonna be a close set? Yeah, because I think they both suck. Yeah. So. Okay. But I think that it will be Master 3, just because... Uh, Master 3, Michael. Same here, because World Lead is kind of looking like a trash can again, so... Yeah. I mean, M not that M3 is not... Unless they leave open but... spirit yeah, for three games. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, I, was gonna say I think games. it comes down to drafts, honestly. Like, if M3 drafts properly, they should have no chance of losing. And by properly, but, we well, just mean ban Nidalee. Like, that's all you have to do. You could have yeah. the worst draft ever. I mean, the Scion shouldn't be open either. I mean, it's I not know, gonna... I know, but I don't think, break. like... His Scion so, record is only 11-6, it's not like super... Yeah, it's well, not. it's a lot better than a Luka's other records. Yeah. <laughs> honestly, he though... He has two positive records. But I mean, honestly, 11-6 is like an insanely good record for World Elite's history. Not team. compared to Nidalee's 10-1 Spirit's 10-1 yeah, well, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's like otherworldly. Yeah, we're talking, we're talking about expectations from a Luka here. Like, it's a little bit we're different talking, than Spirit. It's like we're, talking about a winning, <laughs> we're talking about a winning record on a horrible team. Yeah. That itself yeah. is something. Emily? And he's been on several um, horrible yeah, teams. Yeah, I'm gonna say, as long as Master 3 doesn't let <laughs> WB have Nidalee, then... I wonder why. Yeah. M3, 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 M3. Why is Aluka always on horrible teams? It's just not fair, Gee, man. Wait. The world's just not fair. Alright, guys. Uh, Alright, guys. IG versus RNG. Let's vote. Kelsey. Uh, IG versus RNG. I think we already saw that set this week. Really? Yeah. It was uh, the best of two, uh, okay. and it was pretty one-sided looking, so... <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I think it's, uh, like, when it- the game ends in Zatai 1v4ing on Trundle, <laughs> with a split push build. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're in kind of a situation. <laughs> Colonel's like the one, one of the most amusing looking champions in the game to watch, like bopping everyone, like hard carrying a game. It's just hilarious. It's very Zatai like, too. That is actually. He uh, got the MVP for that game as well. God bless. God bless. Though I would have given it to Kitties. You know. I'm actually just gonna find a g Oh, YG versus Vici, actually. Yeah, that's the next one. But there's, there's like the best Dave one is yet to come. Yeah, Dandy versus Save Top, young. <laughs> Does he just get destroyed? That's the real I question. I still think BG will win. OMG versus Hyper Youth Gaming. That's. I think OMG will win. I oh. love Hyper Youth Gaming. Like I, I honestly like. I would love to see them like pull off some sort of miraculous upset, but okay. they make too many really awful decisions in order to. When I was just watching the Chaogu versus OMG set last split, I had like this terrible sinking feeling before the set even began. I was like, no, <laughs> they can't. They wouldn't <laughs> actually win this, and then they did. So, but this time, I do not feel that way at all. Um, I'm pretty sure that. OMG's gonna win that, so... Yeah, I don't think Hyper Youth Gaming has anyone, like, swift, like, yeah, they can't... I don't know, they don't They don't look as fearsome as Chaogu did in the they still use XQ? Time. Yeah, they're so strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have XQ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. I said, the strongest player is probably their AD carry, but he's going against UZI. Whereas, like, yeah. in Dramasi in Cup last year, the TNT versus TCG bot lane actually did really well against UZI, but I don't mm -hmm. see that happening here, even though I do think XQ is a good player. Nope. And I mean, so. OMG's doing pretty well, so... I don't see it either. Alright. Okay, so... Let's just go on to the next one. Ba -ba -ba. I've already missed the page. Where's the It's page? LGD versus Chaogu. Oh, God. This is like the really unfortunate one because yeah. it means yeah. that one of these two teams isn't going to be in round of eight. So. Yeah, that's sad. Mm. Who do you guys? Okay, this is an actual question I should ask you people. Who do you think is going to win this set? Kelsey, you're the first one, like the left. Who do you think what, is going to win? The other ones weren't genuine. 
I mean... Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, I was putting thought into my answer. I was like, you know, I think that Master 3's Condi is actually a pretty good juggler, so even though Spirit out class, no. <laughs> uh, it's just like, it's... We still don't know, because this is, this is the week after next. Yeah. There are actually going to be four sets a week. Mm -hmm. So... Um, this will be the week after next, so if Wayless's hand injury is actually really severe, I don't think it actually is because he said I might not play, so it doesn't sound that severe. Mm -hmm. But that could be a potential problem. I actually think that LG. T See, this is the thing because LGD should have won versus Invictus Gaming in round of eight last split on paper. Yeah. But then Wayless just decided to play Vladimir three games in a row, and he's just like, this is awesome, because it wasn't even the patch where Vladimir was good, it was like pre-Vladimir <laughs> patch. Yeah. Yeah, so, so... I think that that shows LGD doesn't really care this much about this tournament, and so Chagu will probably win it. Okay. Yeah. Well, Michael? Is, is um, Godvi going to be able to play in that match? Or... Well, that's what I mean. I think it's yeah, not know. that severe. Like, if okay. he says, I only might not be able to okay. play this weekend, then I'm guessing that by that match he'll be recovered. But I just think LGD doesn't care about this tournament. So. Uh, yeah, I'd say I'd say Chaogu too, just because, I mean, I do say that, like, when it's important, LGD usually does have that mantra about them where they're really good, but I don't think they're quite ready yet. It's, like, it's kind of too soon, and I don't, I don't think they put the same weight into that as they would, like, in LPL finals or something. So, yeah, okay. I'll have to go with Chaogu. Emily? Yeah. I'm gonna agree and say Chao Yu, but I do think that, like, especially if Wayless plays, they'll probably be able to, they'll probably, like, it'll probably go to five games. Well, that's what I felt about the IG versus LGD matchup last split, too, but you know what? That but was then, a, yeah, maybe, that was a maybe swift 3 -0. <laughs> A swift 3 0, mind you. Swift. Ha! Uh, 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 uh. 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 Wow, good one. <laughs> okay. King versus Unlimited Potential. Unlimited Potential Gaming. This is actually somewhat hard to call, just because I think UP is very inconsistent, but if they decide yeah. to have a couple players show up, and they decide to camp bottom lane, pretty sure they can win, so. Okay. Michael? Yep, agreed. Comes down to camping bottom lane, and if, like, Hart manages to catch them out stupidly, which is very likely, so I guess that kind of... Hmm. I'll just go ahead and go with UP. Okay. Emily? Um. It depends on. Because, like, the other thing is, yeah, King almost lost to EPA. <laughs> so, even though UP is inconsistent, I think if they actually sit down and prepare for their opponents. I think that they'll be able to knock out King. She doesn't want to say that UP can beat King, she's just like, eh, eh, Well, like, because there's also, like, the random games where UP just, like, they, they'll they even have a good game plan going in, but then they just won't be able to do anything with it. So, like, again, I think just, it's going to be... Yeah. I think it's going to be... I think, like, it'll See, probably go to five games, but I think UP will win. I think the thing is, is that if you take away the set where they 2 out EDG... Like, UP just looks like complete shit. That's yeah, the, problem. That's the problem. So, uh, but then yeah, but you can say the, like, you can say the same so about good. King, like I, last week though. Yeah, last week. Yeah. Like, King, King had like a good week, and then they were like shit. It's kind well, of well. I mean, they tough split one one with paper, teams that are sort of good on paper. Like Cha since they arrive of Name, they split one one with Chaogu, They split one one with LGD, and they split one one with Vici. Even though mm -hmm. Vichy was playing top, like, they also had Insect like, recently transitioned to top, so it was like, eh. And Dandy, okay. fair enough, dumpstered Insect, so that was pretty epic in the 1v1. Um, I don't know. It's really, like, I don't think it... The only factor is if they 2v1 and then Insect pulls some pressure and UP just, like, doesn't think about it. And Name is just like left in the bottom lane and he randomly like 1v2s like he did last night and kills some people. And I was just like, oh. Like, there was one game where they picked Rise 
Kassadin and Jinx I was like, oh, this is over, because the enemy team had Nar and Sivir, it's like, yeah, this, there's no way they're gonna survive landing phase like this, and then, like, Insect dies randomly top, and I'm just like, yeah, this is, this is familiar. So Zero, <laughs> Zero leaves lane and roams top, and then, like, suddenly Nami just gets a kill, it's like, okay, this is interesting, against Sivir Nautilus. Yeah. So there's like that factor because Scatch sometimes randomly miss positions, but I wouldn't, it's not reliable at all. Whereas I think mm. that, well, while UP isn't reliable, they have other places. Like I think Long could easily in eat Insect for breakfast. Uh, he's probably the most consistent player besides Sahart. Yeah. So, I agree. If you want to bet that, on Long. Like in a best of five. I think UP is, I don't know, it, <laughs> like, uh, it's really hard because I feel like I'm definitely overweighing the, because <laughs> this, yeah. this past week was the first time where like all of their plan, like everything is actually gone according to plan for them, where mm -hmm. before they just always had good ideas and were just unable to execute it. But I feel like in a best of five, based on what I saw of King against EPA, well, UP should win. Yeah, and at least they showed that they have good ideas. Something King needs to work on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, King's macro play has improved a lot. Like, their win against LGD was actually pretty intelligent. Mm. But, yeah, again, I don't... It's just too much left up to, like, this one really good thing happening for them. Which I don't think will. And moving on to the easiest... Ah, uh, no, not the easiest. This is actually kind of yeah okay. No. Snake versus Starhorn Rap Club. <laughs> <laughs> Snake versus Starhorn Rap Club. Uh, let's go with uh, Emily this time. I think it'll actually be a three zero. Wow. I don't. Yeah, I don't yeah. see. I don't see Starhorn Rap Club being able to go up against Snake just because I think. I don't know. Like Snake has been experimenting in the LPL for sure, but I think they're a more cohesive team. I think they're more aware of like. What they need to do in game, and I also just think that their team fighting is like vastly superior to Starhorn. So, my hope is that Starhorn Royal Club wins the set. So, uh, King and Starhorn Royal. <laughs> 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 the epic. So the epic you're, so you're relying match. on like the ones that we both said will lose to win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this yeah. epic grudge match. <laughs> this grudge I mean, match. Jk, like there's a, really a double elimination. Narrative. No, um. <laughs> <laughs> But I just don't go. see it happening. Snake's team mm. fighting is just too good. Alternatively, yep. Snake versus UP, the only two teams that have 2 0 Edward Gaming and LPL this year. Eh? Uh, eh? Uh, oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think in that matchup, Starhorn pretty much just gets carried by Sask every game, and that's like all they rely on, and he's going to be facing you, and it's just like, eh. I don't think. <laughs> yeah. It'll be okay. that easy. Alright, Drexen? Yeah, 3 0 Snake. They're like a really There you go. Good. Okay. And so with that. Like those poke cops, those pesky <laughs> little poke yeah. cops. <laughs> I mean, I don't think they're going to run that, though. I mean, I hope I, not. We'll see. Who knows? Exactly. I don't know. I didn't think LGD would run Vladimir before it was buffed on the. before the, <laughs> it was good on a patch. I, I don't know. It's not like Snake trolls in third party tournaments. They definitely just... Beast will not pick Trundle Jungle this time, I promise you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it won't happen. Okay. So now that we're done with both the Masia Cup and LSPL, uh, let's just do final thoughts. Actually, I think... Yeah, yeah final thoughts this before we head out. This is a fairly long episode, so... Yeah. yeah. So, Emily, final thoughts? If you have one. <laughs> Not, final thoughts on what? I know. Like, <laughs> it's like a shout out. It's just like Final mentioned. Thoughts. It's like the end of a Mori episode. Like, <laughs> <laughs> final thoughts. Yeah, uh, <laughs> my final thought is that Kelsey talks too much. <laughs> <laughs> my final thought is if you want to see a really good game plan uh, to go up against EVG, watch that second game because I actually think that the UP EVG second game is really good. Or, um, and then if you want to see just ridiculous uh, mid lane 1v1 outplays, watch uh, LGD IG. Those are my game recommendations, so those are my final thoughts. 
Yeah. And if you're looking for a game to watch on the third day, which was totally abysmal and awful, uh, it would have to be King vs. LGD Game 2, just because I do think there was like a smart plan that was executed, and now I've played Sivir and everyone loves Sivir. Yeah. Sivir <laughs> is the best well, champion. Sivir comps. Uh, <laughs> it's just a it's just a Sivir comp. <laughs> Michael? Alright, well my final thought is that don't pretend you can both attend out of state tournaments and watch 24 Chinese League of Legends <laughs> because well, you actually can't do that. Can so, that happen? It's if you want to be like it. us and watch yeah. a lot of Chinese League, you better have literally no life on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> or there's nothing you can do about it. We could have, we should have just post round probably. But Final well, thoughts, no, Michael? Don't face check. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't face don't check, roll on Little Max Ford Smash. Don't, don't do it. He's just, he, this is LPL 2013, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, we've had fun here, maybe. Maybe too much fun. <laughs> maybe we talked too much about LSPL and Demacia Cup in a way that people would o who only watch those leagues, which is no one but Wait, us, yeah. <laughs> would understand. We probably should have explained a little bit better in some Luckily, aspects. Luckily I can relate but... to the audience here. I can just be like <laughs> the awkward attendee. I was trying so to like get Jackson into the conversation so I could kind of gauge <laughs> to see if we were like too far into an inside joke. I, that's why I was like, what do you think of? What do you think? Seven <laughs> <Okay. tears. laughs> No, if you stop. got this far into the episode, something is seriously wrong. Oh. Yeah, seriously. Young boy, yeah. Zhen Long, you this know, is a congratulations. once and played video games at one point. Zhen Long is no longer playing, by the way. I know. They have a decent AD carry named Chu Shu Shu. Chu Shu. Chu Shu. Chu Shu. Chu Shu. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so, anyways, we should probably. Let's do shout outs. I thought uh, that was a shout out. <laughs> Kelsey, do your damn shout out, all right? Shout out to the Score Esports. It's really awesome. Yay. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I. We now do. Uh... And for some reason, I couldn't like go through the league, like the region categories, like I used to be able to. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Maybe with that. we should tell Matt Demers. Yeah, you should. Also, we now do live CS:GO stats. This was a new development this week, so if you guys like CS:GO. We now cover Dota, CSGO, and League of Legends. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. Think after League of Legends, holy shit, someone needs to hang me. All right, so, <laughs> Michael. <laughs> oh, okay, since we're, since we're talking about other games, I'll yeah. go ahead and actually give a shout-out to the tournament I attended, which is Smash and Splash, because with all the... In the Smash community, like, for context, for, like, the last few months, people have been bitching about the tournament organizers for... Basically every tournament, you could probably just like follow one of the angrier players, like Leffen or something, and they'll kind of, you know, express how very excited they are to attend these tournaments and how everything is going smoothly. And just, just, just there's just a lot of, you know, everybody's having a gale time. No, it's been uh, pretty horrible for the most part. But this event is the first time it was ever run, and every, there was like no tech issues and like no delays, and they had like every title there, and it was a lot of fun. So, nice. uh, yeah, it was cool. And uh, oh. Roy's my boy. I've dropped Marth. Sorry, Marth. Ah. Roy, Roy's our boy. Cue the melee chance. Um, oh, and, and I guess I'll start watching League of Legends again. <laughs> I did it. It's like the saddest. <laughs> you just like I did it for a little bit. Uh, like, I guess I have it's the saddest to. transition. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll you had some it's exciting like, insights I... about Kid. Uh, yeah, I did. Very passionate about it. It's hey, like, hey, yeah. I, I watched some of it. Froskerin would be anything, proud. Any, anything that's historical is fine. Anything that happened this week, I'm just like, yeah. This is how great. you get. This is how you make the transition that. to Chinese League of Legends. You just, you just. <laughs> for all my lines. Like, <laughs> uh, Froskerin uh, would be proud. Actually, yeah. the LSPL matches tonight are pretty terrible, so don't watch them. Oh, there's some pretty good ones. <laughs> right. So, anyways, uh, esports heaven and all that. Of course, you must. Yeah. That's, yeah. There right. we go. Thanks, Rez. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're mentioning it. My turn anymore. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm actually done. It's fine. Sorry, okay. Baby. Okay. Emily. My shout out is gonna be to, I guess, LOL Esports. I'm coming out with an article on PYL, so look forward to that. Woo! PYL is yeah. cool. 
So shout out to him. Too. It's a lot better than that Games in Asian one that came out like two years ago. It's awkward. Yeah. Shit, or bad. or that one that Hubo wrote. JK. JK, hey, Hubo, Hubo, I love you. I didn't oh, even. I tried stuff. to search for it. Soldier. Where it was when you told me he wrote one. Soldier. And I couldn't yeah, find it. <laughs> oh, we're finding it now. Okay. I know, like, oh, I, got Googling I, want, too, right? and I can't, I don't even know if he ever published it. He showed it to me on, like, a Google Doc. Alright, so, there we go. Oh, yeah, my shout-out. Shout-out to the Chiefs. Australian, Australian League of Legends, mates. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have, what about the, the other? The only thing that can make this worse no? is if you had one of those no? fucking shitty webcam programs and you just had, like, a kangaroo jumping across your cam, oh, like, with really horrible CGI. I think we've been talking way too long. <laughs> no, Kelsey. Uh, everybody just do the, the great awkward handshake. I'm gonna